Hi, I'm Dr. Kyle Montgomery. In this video, we'll be going through a problem that has a Wheatstone bridge circuit and specifically looking for the current flow through the bridge uh, or across the bridge rather kind of uh, from the right to the left side of the bridge through, in this case, we're shown that we have, this is a current symbol or the symbol rather, the circuit symbol for a current meter or a ammeter or other terms that you may have read in the books. Um, specifically, so we're trying to figure out what would that current flow be as a function of the resistors that I have in my circuit and as a function of, of course, the uh, voltage source that I have. Well, if we're told that initially this current source has a negligible voltage drop across it, uh, so basically we're just going to say there's zero volt uh, potential drop across that ammeter, as it were, then how do we know how much current is flowing through there? So with that piece of information, what we can do actually is just say that, or imagine this circuit as though we short this out through the bridge. Um, because again, if there's no voltage drop difference there, uh, then more or less the voltage on this side of the circuit and the voltage of this side of the circuit are the same. And so again, that's basically the definition of what we would describe as being a short circuit. Um, so I'll take just a moment to put that in the case just to make it a little bit easier to look at things and evaluate uh, where do we go from there and evaluating how much current exactly do we have flowing through that branch. Okay, so now I've just removed that ammeter because again, it's, 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 we're evaluating the exact same thing, whether it's in there or not, because it, we're told in the problem that there's a negligible voltage drop across it. So we're just in to make it look a little easier to read, uh, treating that as a short circuit, which again is identical. We haven't changed anything about the circuit itself. Um, so now if we're needing to figure out what the current flow is through that branch of the circuit, uh, a, a good way to look or try to get to that specific point is again to maybe figure out what the current flow uh, from the source is and maybe then start from there to subdivide or maybe figure out what the voltage is across each uh, the top half and the bottom half of the circuit are and then use some KCL, basic KCL expression to figure out what that current flow would have to be. So in order to figure out the, uh, let's say total current flow, so I will call this uh, IS, let's say from the source, um, I can just again find the equivalent resistance for this network that we have, which again now that we just have a connection between the middle of the bridge circuit, uh, that helps uh, evaluate things a little bit easier. In this case, we see that we have a 6K arm resistor in parallel with a 30K, because again they're tied on either ends. And then that combination, as the equivalent resistance, is then in series with the parallel combination of the 12 and the 20K. So just another way of writing that is to say the total equivalent resistance for the circuit would just be the 6K in parallel with the 30K resistor, and that is in series then with the parallel combination of the 12K uh, with the 20K resistor. All right. Um, do a little number crunching there. Uh, should come out with a value of 12.5 kilo ohms as the total equivalent resistance. Again, that's it, taking into account all the resistors that we have here in our network. Now, just again applying. Uh, Ohm's law to figure out the total source current. If we have the single equivalent resistance, 12 and a half kilo ohms, then of course we know that the current flow would just have to be the voltage over the, over the resistance. So 75 volts over my, let's say 12,500 ohms, just accounting for the, the prefix there as we have, uh, giving us a total current flow of six milliamps of current, okay? So now that we have uh, the total current flow through the total equivalent resistance, we could then sort of establish what would be the voltage drop across these two uh, halves of the circuit, more or less. Or another way of drawing that might be to look at the circuit in this configuration, where I just write it with as two resistors, where this resistor on the top is just the parallel combination of the six and the 30, and the one on the bottom is just the parallel combination of the 12 and the 20K. And so what we'll uh, look to find out is what is the voltage drop V1 and then V2 again across basically the top and bottom half of the circuit then that would allow us to get to a, a specific current that we'll need through that 12k resistor which we'll need to figure out using KCL to figure out what the, that current ID is. So let me uh, clean this up a little bit and then we'll work on uh, getting to these voltages V1 and V2. Okay, so now in evaluating what V1 and V2 are, we could use a voltage divider or since we already know what the current flow is here, because we defined that current as the IS current, which was six milliamps, and we know of course what the, or we can figure from the previous calculation we did, we can figure what the equivalent resistance is just for the six and 30K and the 12 and the 20K, um, and that would allow us just to use Ohm's law to figure out what V1 and V2 are here. So V1 should be 
the parallel combination of my 6 and 30K should give me a resistance of 5 kilo ohms. And then again, I have a total current flow of 6 milliamps that would be traveling through there. So multiplying that out should give me a voltage of 30 volts. And then from there, because we know that the source has a voltage of 75 volts, and I know I now have a voltage drop of 30 volts across V1, then it should be relatively obvious that V2 would just have to be the difference of those two, uh, or otherwise 45 volts, right? Um, okay, so now that we've just established the voltage across basically the top half of this bridge circuit and the bottom half, uh, now it'll be just a matter of figuring out what is the current flow. Uh, specifically, it'll help us to maybe know the current flow through this 6 kilo ohm resistor and the current through this 12 kilo ohm resistor, because if we know that, then we can establish a KCL relationship that'll tell us then what ID or the current again through this middle part of the circuit would have to be. So in doing that, uh, let me establish maybe what uh, let's say I1 will be through my 6 kilo ohm resistor here, and then maybe I2 will be down through my 12 kilo ohm resistor. So in writing an expression for what I1 would be, well now we now that we know that we have 30 volts across the top branch, and so as even as we split off those two resistors, the 6 and the 30K, as kind of expanding it back out to its original form, we still know that we have a voltage of 30 volts across the 6 kilo ohm resistor. So knowing that, we could just again use Ohm's law to say the current through there would have to be 30 volts over uh, the 6 kilo ohms or 6,000 ohms, and that would give us a current flow of 5 milliamps. And then similarly for the current down through this bottom through the 12K ohm resistor, because I know that that voltage across that resistor is 45 volts, I can do the exact same thing. So here doing 45 volts over the value of the resistor, which is 12K, will give me a value of 3.75 milliamps, okay? So now, again, we've established what the current flow is through this 6K ohm resistor. We've established what the current flow is through this 12K ohm resistor. And so the only unknown, when we look at this node sitting right here, the only unknown then is the current ID, which is what we're trying to get to. So again, if we just think about writing a KCL expression for describing that, we might say that uh, describing any currents flowing out as positive quantities. I could say that ID going out from that node, again, this node right here is where I'm looking, uh, plus I2 is, again, a, a current that's traveling out. That would have to be equal to the current I1, which is traveling into that node. So then just plugging, into the, quant plugging in the quantities that I have for I1 and I2 already uh, should come up with a value of ID being equal to 1.25 milliamps, okay? And this, again, is final solution we we're looking to get. All right. So again, in this uh, problem, just a quick recap, we had a, an ammeter or a current meter sitting here in the middle part of our circuit initially, but because we were told there was basically no voltage drop across that ammeter because all it's doing is detecting or sensing current, uh, we could basically remove that and, and treat it as though there was a short circuit sitting right there in the middle. Um, that allowed us to come up with an equivalent resistance for the whole network, which allowed us to then calculate the total current flow coming from the source. From there, then it was just a matter of kind of subdividing out to find the re relative voltages across each branch, and then ultimately getting to current flow through each resistor, allowing us then to use KCL rule to come up with the current ID across that middle branch. So that wraps it up for this problem. Hope to see you on the next video.